Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, here to discuss or clarify the difference between a noise limiter and a noise blanker. Now, both of these devices are intended to deal with uh, natural and human-made sources of noise, such as the, quote, static that you get from a thunderstorm, spherics, impulse noise, such as you might get from the spark plugs of a, an internal combustion engine, various sorts of noise that you might get from electrical home appliances, power line noise that you might get from arcing or other phenomenon, and an increasing variety of various, all, all manner of electronic devices that generate sharp uh, pulses of signal that have no defined frequency. They cover a broad band of frequencies and are oftentimes sufficient to obliterate the signal in your receiver, particularly if you run automatic level control or automatic gain control, which tends to hang the, the gain of the receiver at the level of the maximum signal. So if a noise, if impulse noise comes in over a weaker signal, uh, you might hear that signal through the noise without automatic gain control, but when you have the automatic gain control activated, the delay causes the gain to be reduced to the level of the noise and the signal disappears. Well, be that as it might or as it is, a noise limiter can only limit the intensity of the peaks of the noise impulses that come in. So if you hear a static crash uh, or an, 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 a pop from the uh, ignition in a spark plug in an internal combustion engine or the arcing of various sorts of devices uh, that occur in like electrical appliances. If you hear those kinds of impulses, the best that a noise limiter can do is to clip the level of the noise at a certain maximum. If that maximum is equal to the level of the signal or lower, then you might still be able to hear the signal pretty well through the noise, although with considerable distraction. A noise blanker, on the other hand, literally shuts the receiver off. It, it literally places a bias on one of the amplifying devices, shutting its gain down to zero during the impulse of the noise. Now, noise blankers are often far more effective than noise limiters, particularly on impulse noise, such as might come from spark plugs or uh, other types of pop, 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 with sharp peaks uh, and well-defined intervals. But spherics, such uh, as static from thunderstorms, is so random that noise blankers are really no more effective than noise limiters in most cases to deal with such noise. And when you do have a noise blanker and the gain is reduced to zero during the peaks of the noise, the signal will seem to have holes in it, especially if it's a continuous carrier. You'll hear the signal fairly well, but if, instead of the pops of noise, you'll hear, the, you'll hear holes, you'll hear gaps, you'll hear silences, but at least you'll be able to in many cases, make out the signal. In the case of a noise limiter, the best you can do is to give the signal a fighting chance on equal terms against the amplitude of the noise. There's another way to reduce noise, though, and it is most effective against uh, noise when you're using extremely narrow bandwidth signals, such as the new WSJT, 
modes. I forget what that stands for now, but uh, I, I keep forgetting what that WSJT and WSPR uh, and uh, signals like that uh, are intended. Uh, what what their what the abbreviations stand for, but but extremely narrow bandwidth tends to reduce the amount of noise that can come in. But if the signal is at a single defined frequency for a long enough period of time, if the signal has an extremely narrow bandwidth, only a few hertz, then it can all get through the filter, but the noise is greatly reduced because it can only get through the filter to the extent that the filter has bandwidth. The broader the bandwidth of the filter, the more noise will get in. So it uh, makes sense to uh, minimize the bandwidth. Another way to defeat noise in some cases is to use frequency or phase modulation rather than amplitude modulation, and then make sure that a limiter, a good limiter is included for a discriminator circuit in the FM receiver. There are a lot of ways to deal with human-made noise and natural sources of noise, but unfortunately, these sources of noise are all getting worse. Well, the natural source is not necessarily. Depends where you're located, but human-made sources of noise are becoming more and more of a problem, but uh, we can deal with it as radio hams. That's what we do. We invent new things, new technologies to deal with new challenges. And noise certainly is a challenge in this uh, modern advanced time. Even computers generate all kinds of noise in receivers, and you've probably heard a, a, a practically infinite variety of noise types. But a noise limiter can only clip off the peaks of the noise, whereas a noise blanker actually turns the receiver off during noise peaks. Noise blankers are most effective against noise that has well-defined peaks and gaps. Noise limiters are just as good as noise blankers or sometimes even better if the noise is of a more continuous nature, like hiss or spherics from thunderstorms. You'll learn that as, you, as your experience with noise grows. And if you plan to be a radio ham for very long, it will grow. Believe me. Trust me on this. Stan Jubilisco, W1GV, saying 73 and so long, which in my particular native mode always translates to da 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 da, hopefully audible through all the noise.